PT versus alien. Now that you have learned the difference between an extraterrestrial and an alien, we would like you to forget the distinction immediately. The danger in the definitions is that as mental concepts, they separate ones again. This mission is not about separation, nor it is a Hollywood western being performed by a cast of good guys and bad guys. It is about light and bringing more of it onto the planet. The invitation to enter into the light is extended to all humankind, aliens included, for aliens are only extraterrestrials who have chosen to stand in the darkness, live a lie, and wear a disguise. Note, at the time of this printing, there are only two basic types of people in this planet, extraterrestrials and aliens. Extraterrestrial is a transitional term which will become unnecessary by the completion of this mission. At that point, human will replace the term. An awareness of your extraterrestrial nature will then be an integral part of all human experience, and aliens will no longer occupy the planet. In the same manner their transitional terms, such as androgyny, will cease to have any meaning. A balanced male and female will emerge within a very being. As a result, the word androgyny will be thrown on the trash heap, relegated to the status of a needless term that redundantly describes what it means to be human. Keep in mind that the definitions in this dictionary were written for a world in transition and are subject to revision. Walkin. Most of you have probably heard the term walkin, but for the benefit of those who have been assigned to some real Boondock outposts, we will explain its meaning. The walkin is a member of the mission who has walked into a body that was previously occupied by another tenant. The main function of walk-ins is to assist ground crew members who came here in a more conventional manner to awaken to their true identity, hopefully before the mission is over. They retain much of their interdimensional consciousness and can move through dysfunctional patterns at an accelerated rate, making them invaluable to the numbed out and befuddled crew members who have been here their entire lives. The walk-ins are an expeditionary unit, most of whom will walk right back out once the task of awakening this planet is completed. Walk-ins are missionaries of the light, who are serving in this mission's rendition of the foreign exchange program. Crawling. Even the most urbane and knowledgeable members of this mission will not have heard of the term crawling because we just made it up. Crawlins are planetary transition team members who opted to enter this plane through the normal currently traumatic birth process. Upon arriving, most of them instantly re-evaluated the situation and changed their minds, but were unable to figure out a way back. The majority of this group incarnated shortly after World War II, their advent being triggered by the Manhattan Project's birthing of the nuclear age and the subsequent atomic bombing of Japan. They are referred to as the war baby crop or baby boomers by the unsuspecting local population. The crawlins are the backbone of this mission. If you are reading this, you are most likely one of them because the crawlins are the ones that necessitated the writing of this manual. UFO. Some people on this planet are certain that UFOs are currently visiting this place. Most people feel that this is an absurd allegation of a marginal group whose members are basically nuts. This perception is backed by governmental agencies that swear that UFOs do not exist, and have tons of highly classified information to prove it. The UFO advocates justly point out that no government needs secret files on something that doesn't exist. They find it equally absurd for governmental agencies to simultaneously refuse to release such files on the grounds that national security is at stake. Most people haven't given the slight inconsistency any thought going along with the party line, under the assumption that the government wouldn't lie, and that father knows best. Mission Control would like to put this matter to rest. The UFO faction is made up of what we call the nuts and bolts, people. They are still intrigued with third dimensional phenomena, and are consequently missing the boat while looking for ships. Those who believe there is nothing to believe have been basically brainwashed, by official discrediting of the question, and are equally off track. The governmental agencies are lying through their teeth, and are therefore the most off base of all three factions. Third dimensional vehicles from other planets do of course exist. 
However they are not the ships you should be preoccupied with. If an object can be identified as an unidentified flying object, it is not one of the craft that we control, nor is it a member of the Royal Celestial Air Force Fleet that is the right arm of this mission. Our craft are not third dimensional. However they are in position throughout your skies at this moment. They land wherever and whenever they wish, and they are not using an invisibility cloak to hide their presence. They are blatantly and open, visible to the few who have broken through the blindness that afflicts the third dimension. We do not mean to trivialize your third dimensional experience or discredit the craft which travel the dimension. There are many very sweet entities in the third dimension who are assisting with this mission. However, their vehicles are definitely in the General Motors branch of this expedition and not representatives of the mighty force of fifth dimensional craft that now guard your planet's atmosphere. As you awaken, the presence of other dimensional craft will become obvious and fill you with awe. As a result, the contested issue of the 3D UFO will fade in interest, just as the Model T Ford no longer thrills you or occupies your thoughts. Note, the purpose of this piece is not to define UFO, but to clear up some of the planetary provincialism that surrounds this issue. It is also to help prepare you for the upcoming scandal of Cosmogate, a disclosure of the intergovernmental cover-up of extraterrestrial presence that is soon to be exposed globally. Because the sentry serves another function and is not a true definition, no part of it warranted highlighting. Note, for clarity, we now offer a brief description of the dimensions. The third dimension is the one you are currently living in and transiting out of. It is the one you consider the sum total of reality. The fourth dimension is sometimes referred to as the astral plane and exists as a shadow dimension to the third. Like the third, it is also a dimension of polarity and is inhabited by what you call spirits and disembodied entities. This dimension has fallen out of favor with the thinking of scientific materialism and has been reduced to the ranks of a primitive, superstitious belief a belief that permeated human myth until you all smartened up and dismissed it. You may be surprised to learn that the truth does not require your belief in it in order to function, and the fourth dimension has managed to carry in despite your rejection. The fifth dimension appears in your symbol systems as heaven, and compared to the third dimension, it is. It is a dimension of light of love, and it is free of the illusions of duality and separation. The fifth dimension is in no way the end of the line. It is just the next step in your planetary evolution. Creation actually contains an infinite number of dimensions, many of which you inhabit simultaneously. We hope that clears this matter up for you. Level I I words. Look Jane, see spot transmute. Light. The concept of light is a misunderstood term. Few have grasped its meaning, and most use it lightly. Since the manual uses this term often, it requires an expanded definition. True light is awesome. It is so far beyond the common English usage, in conjunction with such things as neon, stop sun, flash bud, and do you have a, that it is difficult to express its actual meaning in this language. Let us put it this way. You are victims of indirect lighting. Whatever romance you have created by using light in this manner has lost its charm. Direct lighting is the wave of the future. As a mission member, you are specifically here to plug into that high voltage line. Please become conscious of this word's meaning as you use it. Light is the force of reclamation, stewarded by the power of creation. Light is nothing less than life itself. Transmutation. Transmutation is not to be confused with transformation. This world had to go through thousands of years of transmuting before it was in a position to transmute. That cycle of transmutation is now complete, and the transmutative cycle has begun. Transmutation is a genetic change at the cellular level, which is now in process for all life forms on this planet. The Earth, who is a living consciousness, has made her decision, determined her course, and begun her dimensional shift. Subsequently all planetary life is being prepared for this event through the cellular transmutational process. This is a birth process 
which will deliver this planet and all participate in life forms into the fifth dimension. Cellular transmutation is not something you may choose to do if it interests you, like taking up golf. It is something that is happening and that you chose to do before you got here. Otherwise you wouldn't be here. Although you have no genetic option in this matter, you still have free will. You can willingly assist this procedure and transmute with this planetary sphere, or you can resist the process and become as some members of our planetary transition team like to say, crispy critters. Mission Control advises you to think twice before you change your mind. Intelligence. We have noticed that your idea of intelligence and our idea of intelligence have very little to do with one another. For instance, you call yourselves an intelligent species, yet you are dangerously close to making your planet uninhabitable by anything other than asphalt. You have also managed to place yourselves at the top of the endangered species list. May we point out that even a virus demonstrates a more astute grasp of its situation than that. The only reason a virus is inclined to trash out its environment is in its well-calculated attempt to maintain its life. We have also noticed that you use the word smart in conjunction with business swindles and corrupt deals. When someone sells property that is located on a quicksand bug, you say, boy, was that a smart move. You also think it is incredibly clever to sell a used car for top dollar without mentioning that it has no transmission. Both these examples are trumped up illustrations that lack the malignancy of your actual activities. Your governments, your corporations, and your citizenry commit mind-boggling atrocities in the name of material cunning, and all human commerce is riddled with spiritual scandal. Moreover, those such acts may technically be fraud. According to your laws, fraud is an issue only if you have the misfortune of getting caught. Otherwise, these acts remain shrewd business moves, the products of brilliant minds. For obvious reasons, we are perplexed by your concept of intelligence and would like to offer another definition. The basic misunderstanding of this term arises from the fact that the inhabitants of this planet have confused brains for intelligence. A brain is an instrument of intelligence, while intelligence is a force. Intelligence is the force of life, expressing itself in created form. It exists in all life, regardless of whether it has a brain or not. Through the misuse of your mental processes, you have come to regard intelligence as the art of one-upmanship and acts of spiritual barbarism. You have somehow managed to reduce rationality to the mental faculty that enables you to 